Manchester United are told what to expect with new signing Chido Obi Martin as the timeline for his signing is revealed. Anthony closing in on a move to Turkey, according to reports. Manchester United come knocking for a Bundesliga striker with a future transfer on the cards. Zero chances of Casemiro joining Galatasaray. And Teddy Sheringham thinks Manchester United should be signing proper players. All this plus the latest Manchester United news and transfer news that will keep you right up to date with everything. Welcome to Man United Review. My name's Jamie. Before we get into it, please smash a like on the video. Let's jump straight on into it. So firstly, I just want to start by congratulation. I'm um, congratulating Kobe Mainu and Alejandro Garnacho, who have both been nominated for the 2024 Copa Trophy, which is basically the Ballon d'Or for under 21s. Genuinely wish them all the best. Um, they've got big company on there, though, with um, Yamal, Silvino, I think um, Arda Gula, João Neves, just to name a few of the names that are also nominated on there. But um, fantastic achievement for both players. Well-deserved as well. Arguably, they've been our two best players over the over the last kind of season or two. Um yeah, fantastic. Especially if Kobe Mainu, just think what a year he's had. Broke into the first team last preseason, had a had an injury issue, and then came into the team, and his stock has just absolutely skyrocketed, hasn't it? Gone to the Euros, called up obviously, um, and now potentially on the on the um Copa Trophy. Unbelievable achievement. Just shows what an unbelievable talent he is. And Alejandro Garnacho was arguably one of our best players last season, and one of our most consistent players anyway in terms of appearances. Um, so genuinely wish them all the best. Smash the like on the video if you do too. Now let's go through some other news. So Christian Vavell. So Christian Vavell will stay on as Manchester United's interim director of recruitment for the January transfer window after playing a key role in the summer window for the club. Vavell has signed a contract until February, but will remain in his role until then with a with a possibility he then takes up the position on a permanent basis with the club and the 37 year old job well, sorry with the club and the 37 year old German both happy on how the relationship has worked so far um I'm massively all for that I think he's been really influential in the summer transfer window specifically with signing some of the um some of the younger players that we've that we've signed Kone um being specifically one of them he's one of those people that's got a really good um, connection with other clubs and a real eye for young talent. Obviously, being at the RB RB clubs, RB Salzburg and RB Leipzig, who are, are fantastic teams for getting in these kind of hidden gems, developing them, and obviously they sell them on for for profit. That's their kind of business model. But um, so yeah, massively excited to see him, and hopefully um, we'll start seeing the fruits of his kind of work in the future as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm all for that personally. Let me know what you think in the comments. And then we had a bit of noise, obviously, over the last couple of days regarding Casemiro. Um, so we'll go through the latest. Now, in yesterday's video, I did say that there were some reports from Turkish outlets um, and uh, not very credible journalists could su suggesting that um, a move to Turkey or to specifically to Galatasaray could be on the cards. And I said, well, I'd like to wait for a bit more credibility. There has been a bit more credibility regarding it, um, firstly. So... Um, so Galatasaray are looking to sign a midfielder before the transfer deadline for Turkish uh, before the transfer deadline for Turkish clubs expire, and Casemiro is on their shortlist. Now that came from um, Chris Class, who writes for the Independent, I believe. Um, so very um, no, so they the Times. So quite a credible credible outlet. Um, Rob Dawson, ESPN, is also a credible kind of outlet um, source saying Manchester United would consider a deal for Casemiro, but only if the offer is good. Salary is an issue. However, Galatasaray are interested. Um, of course, his salary is going to be an issue. But then um, just after that, another Turkish journalist, I don't know the credibility of, but he's got like a few hundred thousand followers on Twitter, so I'm going to assume fairly credible, saying that there is zero chance of Casemiro leaving for Galatasaray in the final days of the window. And then Chris Wheeler, who's been really decent this um, this summer, ran recently saying Casemiro is determined to stay at Manchester United and fight for his place and will reject any offers um, to move to Turkey. And to be fair, I agree with most of you in the comments. While it kind of you know, we're all reactionary, like getting rid of Casemiro, or getting rid of players now just makes zero sense because we can't bring in replacements. And especially in the midfield, I do think as bad as what Casemiro was at the weekend, um, you know, we're just weakening ourselves even more because 
you know, hopefully with Ugarte coming in, that maybe would push Casemiro to the bench and he's not a bad player to have to rotate or we've got a lot of games coming up as well. Do you know what I mean? So we do need a, a, a kind of squad. Um, plus the fact the Turkish leagues are not going to be able to afford his wages either. So so it, I doubt, and I doubt they'll have the sort of money that United would want for Casemiro to sell him now. So yeah, I think it's a no-go for that one. I think it's just mischief. Um or maybe just people kind of putting stories out there for views and for clicks. And um, I can't see us getting rid of Casemiro now. To, and, and for those reasons, don't think the Turkish clubs can afford his fee. I don't think they can afford his wages. That means we would have to loan him. Why would we loan him and pay half of his wages it's at this stage of the, like when our transfer window is closed and we can't get a replacement, we're just massively weakening ourselves. Um so I, I don't think that one's a no go, but let me go. Let me know um, your thoughts in the comments. And then the other player that's been heavily linked with Anthony. So we've had a few stories with that. So firstly, um, this came again from Turkish sources via Sport Witness saying Fenerbahce are trying to finalize a deal to sign Anthony on loan by tonight. That was last night, which obviously hasn't happened. Um, Sam C though dismissed the the report saying Anthony will not be joining Fenerbahce this transfer window despite rumours. Player understood to be committed to United and hoping to make a mark when given the opportunity. And then Fabrizio Romano has also dismissed the rumour saying no truth in Anthony Fenerbahce links from Turkey as he's fully committed to Manchester United project. No intention to leave the club this summer as always stated by those close to the Brazilian winger. So I think both deals are... Uh, um, are just nonsense, to be honest with you. I think there's zero chance of us um, letting Casemiro go to Turkey, and I think there's zero chance of Anthony going to Turkey as well because we just don't have a big enough squad in order to... Like, we've got a lot of games coming up. That's what we've got to remember. We've got so many games. We're effectively playing twice a week now for the until the next international break um, with, with the, obviously the Europa League starting, cup games starting as well. We need a squad and we need to be able to rotate. And as, as you know, bad as Anthony has been, he is still a body that can come on to help take the pressure off of Ahmad, Garnacho, and Rashford. If you leave ourselves massively exposed, I think if we let Anthony go now without getting a replacement and who are you going to get when the transfer windows close? Only free agents and there's no free agents available that are any good, um, in my opinion, on in the wing positions. So... Yeah, I think there's zero chance of both those players going. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments. Now, the next news is regarding um, Chido Obi Martins. So Richard Fay is a good source said it would be no surprise if Chido Obi's arrival wasn't confirmed until mid-September at the earliest, as it takes six weeks of Premier League ratification with the deal agreed at the start of August. So it could be still a few weeks until we see or get the official kind of noise or, or official confirmation for Chido Obi Martin. Um, but it is what it is. If that's the the way it goes, that's the, you know, that's the kind of length of the process, which is frustrating, but um, not, not we can do about it. But um, this was some interesting quotes from Chido Obi Martin's um international manager for Denmark where he said his greatest competence is that he scores many goals if you saw some of the goals at the European Championships he's a really good finisher and positionally good and he and he gets free for that so so he gets um gets free for that he is also a good he is also good man to man he is good at running in depth in relation to getting into free positions his finishing skills are what allow him to score so many goals. So that's an insight into Chido Ubi Martin. So effectively, he's got really good movement going off of that report, and he's a really good finisher, according to the um, Danish under-18 manager. Um, and and you can see that in, in this, if you've watched any of his highlights or seen his clips and stuff, he does look a really, really good player, good prospect. I can see why there's so much hype around him anyway. Um, but obviously he is still only, what, 16? So it's not like he's coming in to, and going to be dominating our first team and, you know, competing with Hoyland and Xerxes straight away. But he's, he's massively exciting and definitely one to keep an eye on and one that I hope we can develop like we have developed some of our other youth players. Obviously we've mentioned... Garnacho and Kobe Mainu at the start there. I think that's one of the successes of United over recent years anyway, is their development of youth and the academy. That's the, probably the one that one and only thing that we've actually managed to get right over over the recent recent years. But let me know what you think about that in the comments. And then this again, this came from Sport Build via Sport Witness. So good a fairly credible German outlet. Um 
saying that Chelsea, Tottenham and Manchester United all came knocking for RB Leipzig's Luis Openda in the summer with a future transfer very much on the cards. Any club that wishes to buy him will need in excess of 75 million euros to do so as there's no release clause. Um, so there's, so there is no release clause in his current deal. Um, I mean, you know, I, I think Openda is a good striker, but are we really going to be going and spending that much money on another striker next summer? I mean, it, obviously it depends, I suppose, on the form of Hoyland and, and Xerxes this season. Um, it might not be beyond the realms of of impossible or um, who knows what we're going to be looking at. next. We need to wait to see how the season plays out, I suppose, to see that. I would definitely take him. He's a really good player, really good finisher, but a lot of money. Um, and I think United have put all their eggs in the Hoyland Xerxes basket. We've spent a lot of money on those as well. And obviously they're young players that can develop. Um I think, if anything, personally, I think United's names being used there to generate interest, maybe from Chelsea or maybe from Tottenham. Tottenham and Chelsea obviously would maybe need some strikers, and I think maybe Man United's name's just been thrown in there in the mix just to just to kind of entice other clubs or just to put his name out there potentially on the market. But let me know what you think about Appender in the comments. And then the last um, bit of news I wanted to go for you is regarding Terry Sheringham's done a very interesting interview All right, where he slams... Um, basically the hierarchy at united as opposed to ten hag so he, um so he said that the basically the the people above the manager should be taking some of the blame for what's going on as well almost take their share of the blame um so he said for me when the big players become available that's when manchester united should strike i've said it before but declan rice was available last summer harry kane was too united weren't anywhere near getting those players in they're the big players the big england players they um they've got to be going for and getting um and then he kind of did reference like the fact we went real fernand wayne rooney and he gave those as kind of examples and it's hard to disagree with that to be fair because they were two top quality players but you've got to look at the circumstances we didn't have the cash to go for rice and tottenham didn't want to sell harry kane to another premier league team so i get what he's saying we should be looking at going for those players i agree but the circumstances around those two specifically is a little bit different, but I like the kind of idea of what he's saying. Like we should be going and getting the best Premier League players, in my opinion, if they become available because they've got that kind of pedigree in their, you know, Premier League proven, and and that does hold a lot, a, a lot at the moment, in my opinion, especially with how how kind of competitive the Premier League is. But then he also said that when Manchester United aren't in the conversation when it comes to those players, you know you've got a problem. Manchester United have got no leaders. They've got decent players, but everyone is looking after themselves. And that is not how you build a football team. You need leaders to follow, and they haven't got any. And again, I can't, it's hard to disagree with that. We do lack a little bit of leadership, I think, although maybe with the new signings coming in, I think we've got, he's got some some fight about him and some grit about him. Martinez is back. De Litt's obviously a leader. Um I mean, Casemiro, Bruno, do you know what I mean? So I do, I, I, it's just, we don't see it on the pitch. There is a lack of leadership on the pitch. You never really see, you know, somebody taking control of situations very often at United. And I think it, that's maybe what he's getting. But um, let me know what you think about that in the comments. And then he also said, all these players, they keep signing, you know, Mateus De Litt, okay, he might be a nice player, but they've got Harry Maguire there who can do a, who can do a very similar job. Go out and break the bank and get proper players in who who you know are going to do a, um, a job week in, week out. De Litt hasn't been, hasn't, De Litt has been at a few different clubs now. Why? Why are people letting him go? Um, that's not a top player. So, and that's where I disagree with, Teddy Sheringham, to be honest. I know, um, obviously, Dillett has, but he's right. Dillett has played at a few clubs, but he's also gone for massive transfer fees as well. He's not like he's been released or kicked out the door. Juventus had to sell him because of COVID. They needed to raise funds after COVID. They didn't want to sell him. They had to sell him. They were forced into that deal, and Bayern Munich paid an absolute fortune for him. Um, and then I think it's just circumstantial that the, the Bayern Munich board, for whatever reason, just decided they didn't want to delete this season um even though 70,000 Bayern Munich fans protested against the fact that then they were saying that they were he was um their best defender so I disagree with the delete Maguire comparison but it's hard to disagree for the others I mean the fact that he's saying that United should be going out when the best players are available United should be in a position when they're going out to get them 
but the the fact the reality is we haven't been because we've wasted money on players that we didn't need and that's been the massive problem in the past we don't have the funds to go we didn't have the funds to go and get Declan Rice for example because we'd spent 85 million pounds on Anthony the season before and that's all and and so I do agree with what you're saying in regards to the problem at United has been as much as the manager and the tactics and and all that stuff but if you take a step back and think about it why weren't we in for Declan Rice and Harry Kane? Why didn't we have the cash available? And all of that was down to the mismanagement in the past. And that's hopefully something that the Ineos and the new structure are looking to move on from. Because then if we have the sort of transfer window that we have, where we're moving on players, buying players in, balancing the books, that frees up a lot of capital. So that if in the future, when we've got the squad kind of in a much better place than if a top, top player does become available. United should be in the running for that. We should have the money available to do that because we're one of the wealthiest clubs in the world. We've just been ran like dog poo for the last 10 years or so um, and and wasting money on players that are just not 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 worth it. Not worth it. Um, but let me know what you think about that in the comments. And so that is you all up to date with the latest Manchester United news and transfer news. Share your thoughts in the comments. Do enjoy reading them. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see you in the next one.